What's going on, Lego Maniacs? It's Ty, the Lego guy here, and welcome to another episode of Ty's Talks, a Q&A series. We're in episode 34. This one had some interesting ones, including what are my thoughts on the new winter wave that we're getting, along with if I could only choose one set to represent Lego as a whole, like as a brand, which one would it be? Really, really good question. And we'll also get into Brick Stop and some of the mocks that they make. One of you guys was wondering what I think about them. And they're a pretty interesting mock building site. We'll show a couple of them off along with a bunch of other good questions. And again, if you have questions for next Ty's Talks, just leave them in the comments and we'll get to them in episode 35. But enough talk, let's get right into it. And our first question comes to us from Comer Brick Creations. And he says, have you seen any of the classic mocks from Brickstock? If so, which ones are your favorite? Also, what is your limit to spend on old sets? Mine is around 200 unless I part them out over time. Okay, so checking out Brickstop, they got some awesome looking mocks. Especially if you like the classic themes like Castle and Pirates. Like the one that I really like or the two that I really like. Well, the first one is the Treetop Ambush. It's kind of like a souped up version of the Forest Men from the 90s. It's just much, much bigger. That set looks amazing. The other one that I really like is the Islanders Tower Throne. It's kind of taking something that, again, that we had back from the 90s, same thing, Islanders are 90s, and it's just making it better and bigger. Maybe not better, but definitely bigger. And I really, really do like those two models. They have a bunch of other really cool sets too that maybe one of these days I will try and build. That would make for an, an interesting review as well for you guys. And as far as the maximum that I spend on older sets, 200 bucks, 200 bucks US, that, that's probably around the most I'll spend. Maybe 300 US if I really, really want it. No, no, 300 US is the most that I'll spend because I bought the Amazon Ruins from the Adventurer theme and I think I paid, uh, it wasn't quite 300 US. Maybe it was, maybe it was about 250 US, but I really, really wanted that one. The Temple of Anubis was another one that I paid. Not, uh, I might've paid a little bit less than 200 US for that one, maybe 150. But yeah, that's kind of veering on the most that I'll pay for any of these older sets. I really, really want the Imperial Outpost, but that one's going for more than even 300 US. Maybe one of these days I'll get it, but uh, yeah, some of those older sets just really appreciate over time. Vigard says, question. What is your opinion on the winter wave of LEGO Star Wars or in general? Any cool sets you plan to pick up? I will just assume they are released within the next episode is uploaded. I have heard some exciting rumors, still hoping for a Pirates of Kingdom theme, lol. Maybe in the summer wave. Okay, so as far as my thoughts on the winter wave, it's very cheap for as far as Star Wars goes, but they have a number of really good ones. Like they have an even smaller 501st Battle Pack. They also finally made a TIE Bomber, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. I will be buying that probably in my next Search for the Holy Lego deals. I don't even mind paying full price for it. I just have wanted them to make an updated TIE Bomber for a long time. I'll also compare it against the old one. And then the, the Brickheads, the Tuscan Raider, also looks pretty good. So yeah, I'm a, I, I do like the new Star Wars Winter Wave. It is a little bit smaller, but I mean, that's cheaper, which I think none of us will really complain about just because the last, last two waves have been really expensive. So yeah, I like the new Star Wars Wave. And as far as a Kingdom or Pirate theme coming out in the summer of this year, I'd be all for that. Kylo Sam asks, ask Ty, what do you think about Andor? Okay, so yeah, time appropriate question. Uh, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was a little bit different for Star Wars. It really reminded me of Blade Runner, but it still had quite a bit of, you know, the Star Wars vibe to it. I thought that the last episode was really good. I'm not gonna give you guys any spoilers in case you haven't finished it yet. But yeah, I, I thought that Andor was good. I also have liked, I liked Obi-Wan, although it wasn't perfect. I really, really like Tales of the Jedi. The TV shows that have been coming out lately for Star Wars, in my opinion, have been pretty good. And uh, yeah, hopefully they keep it up. MC says, hey Ty, my question is, have you been feeling the effect of the big wind chill that's affected the USA currently? I know it's cold in Canada, but on a more fun question, what type of games, board games, and video games do you play, if at all? Thanks. Okay, so yeah, as far as the wind chill or cold weather that's moving through North America, Yes, we definitely have felt it here. It's been the coldest it's ever been as far as where I live in BC or British Columbia. We don't generally get over minus 20 Celsius and that's how cold it's been. So crazy, we're now starting to get out of it, which is nice. 
As far as what board games and video games I play, uh, I love Age of Empires, I've mentioned that before. I like all the Lego games as well, or most of them. I also like Star Wars Battlefront 2, you know, games like that. Crash Bandicoot, Zelda games, those are all good. And as far as board games, maybe like Chess, Risk, Catan. Strategy games is what I kind of aim for, but uh, yeah, good questions. Those would probably be the choices that I go with. Elias says, Hey Ty, my question is, what do you think of the new 501st Battle Pack coming in January and also the Jazz Club modular being released January 1st? Okay, so as far as the 501st Battle Pack, I'm all for it. We're getting four clones from the 501st Legion for only 20 USD. That's a great price. A lot easier or a lot cheaper to build your 501st Army. And as far as the Jazz Club, if you guys been watching this channel, you know I love modulars and I think that one looks awesome as well. I will definitely be buying it. I mean, you can tell I like modulars. Even uh, part of my background is, you know, there's two modulars right here. We have the bookshop along with the Parisian restaurant. So yeah, I'm all for them. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be buying both those sets. I think that they're both really good. Casper says, do you try to improve upon Lego sets with your own ideas? Do you make back of the box alternate builds without instruction? Okay, so as far as if I make changes, yeah. If I feel that the set should be a little bit better, I did that with the 2020 AT-AT along with the Creator Pirate Ship. I didn't like the fact that the Creator Pirate Ship didn't have cloth sails along with a couple other things that I thought needed to be changed. And the AT-AT, there were a number of different little flaws that I found with it. Still really like that set, but yeah, I definitely do mod sets if I feel that they need it. A lot of times I'll even give you guys videos on it. And as far as alternate builds go, yeah, I, I think I've done that once or twice, but I've never ever done it without instructions. If anything, I'll go online and I'll try to find instructions on it. But I do think that some of the alternate builds were pretty good. I do wish that they did that a little bit more nowadays. I think it was extremely creative and uh, something that LEGO should try and do again. Evan says, Ty, do you collect other items besides LEGO, like cards, coins? Okay, so this is a good one. As a LEGO collector, we tend to like to collect things. I think that's just normal. Uh, I'm really into collecting like retro games, like N64, SNES, stuff like that. I know you can get a simulator, but I'd rather have the physical copy of the game. Also game systems, I'm really into collecting those. I like collecting watches, shoes. Uh, when I was younger, I collected model cars quite a bit. Still have them, they're just not on display or anything. That's one thing I kind of have to watch though and I think you guys can relate to that as well like you can get into collecting something else and that can take a lot of time money and space so I try to like not get into too many other collections but yeah I do collecting I do like collecting other things Garrett asks a really good question which is if there could only be one Lego set to define all of Lego as a brand what set would you choose okay so I've been thinking about this for like the last number of days trying to come up with a good answer. I'm probably gonna go with like, it's very difficult. I'm gonna go with the Galaxy Explorer, like the original one from the 80s. Why do I say that set? Well, because Lego is all about adventure. And I mean, what's more adventurous than, you know, flying into space with a spaceship? They also had multiple alternate builds on the back of that box. And uh, yeah, I really like the new version that they have of it. I just, I feel that that really is a, does a, Good job representing what Lego's all about. It's about being creative. It's about alternate builds or, you know, building things based off your imagination, you know, going into space. So there's adventure. A couple of the other ones though that came to mind that were close seconds was maybe like the Temple of Anubis from the Adventurer, Adventurer theme. That's a really good set. You have both a historical building and you have vehicles which are two things that LEGO really likes to get into, you know, building large scale base sets along with, you know, building vehicles. Those are big things of, about LEGO, right? And it's adventure, right? It's called adventures. I think some of the castle sets would also be appropriate. There's just so many good sets, but I'm probably gonna go with the Galaxy Explorer. It's all about adventure. It's all about building things based off your imagination. And I feel that it does a very good job representing what LEGO is all about. And our last question comes to us from Max. And he says, why are brown pieces cursed with being so brittle? I have to completely agree with you. Brown pieces are notorious for cracking on us, especially the dark brown ones, like the brown cheese slopes. I don't know how many of those pieces I've gone through. Why they say it happens is because whatever chemicals or components of plastic that are needed to make the brown colored brick, apparently it's just not as durable as other colors like black, white, gray. They, it's just to do with the formula that they have to use 
to produce that color of brick. It's really, really, really weird. I just recently found that out. And it does make sense uh, because, I mean, it's not a black piece that's colored brown. It's just, it's completely brown through and through. And apparently that's why those pieces are just so brittle. But that pretty well does uh, this episode of Ty's Talks. Again, if you have questions for next Ties Talks, just leave them in the comments and we'll get to them in episode 35. But that pretty well does the video, but if you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. And uh, if you're new to the channel, you know, definitely consider subscribing and click that bell so you're notified for any future Ties Talks. We do one of them every single month and you guys come up with a lot of good stuff. A lot of stuff that I wouldn't normally think about. And hopefully it's helping you guys out maybe on uh, which sets to buy or you know, maybe some cool mock sites to check out like Brickstop. That site is amazing. And uh, yeah, again, I hope to eventually maybe build some of those sets or buy some of their instructions because I just think that they're really, really good. But again, that pretty well does uh, this episode again. But thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.